found you all another really cool high value uh, everyday carry flipper knife. This is another one from Real Steel. So I'm going to go over the facts of this knife and then I'm going to tell you what I like and what I don't like so much about the blade. But overall, it's a good one folks. So the Real Steel E571 is a knife and you can see by its companions here what class it's in. It's over the 3 inch blade, so it's about 3 to 3.5 inch blade length. Uh, this is 3.35 inches. Total length about 7.5 inches. It's, um, yeah, there's the Benchmade 940, there's the Boker, um, Brett Zinker, um, what's this called? The Urban Trapper. It is a, oh, put some grid in there, it's a um, frame looking knife and it's a stainless steel frame looking knife. You pay about $70 for this blade. It's um, got 14C28N blade steel which is fully flat ground and it's on a bearing system for flipping frame lock as you can see uh, comes with a gold pocket clip or which uh, is the fitted clip, the black one um, I changed it over to the gold because I think that looks cool um, it is designed by Liang Gang who I know you're not probably gonna know his name it's more just to say that we at Real Steel although we're a Chinese knife company we're actually designing our own knives we're not just doing the Ganzo thing of running a search algorithm for knife pictures and then kind of merging them together to make our knives. So they definitely got someone who's thinking over there at Real Steel and thinking about ergos, thinking about what people want. And this is definitely what people want right now. This is this is it, the stainless steel or the, the steel frame locks going big, going great guns, but this one comes at a really good price. Let's get into what I like about the knife. That blade is one thing I like about the knife. Fully flat ground. Um, it's just on three millimeters thick, so it's a good working thickness. It's a slicing beast, it really, really is. It slices like my Spyderco Mantra slices. Um, actually, very comparable knife. If you don't want to fork out for the Mantra, but you want something like this, then this is probably a really good thing to fork out for. Because um, it slices about as well, they're about the same thickness, they're you know, very, very sort of you know, similar knives in terms of look, but certainly similar in terms of, of use. It's got a really nice blade shape as well. See that belly there? It's just a pretty much constant swoop up all the way to the tip, which then has a slight drop on it. So down, a little slight drop, quite late drop as well. The tip of this knife is super sharp as well. So it's going to be great for little tiny jobs, but then again, like any fine tip, it's probably going to go the first time you abuse it. So just keep that in mind. But I really, really love how they've done the blade. I also like the grip. I don't love the grip. I like the grip. It could have a little bit more jimping, but overall it is something that I like. Uh, it's very simple, and it reminds me a bit of the um, sort of the Rick Hindra design knives. No finger grooves, nothing like that. Just a nice swoop to sink your hand into. The flipper does the job of a guard. Really, really well done. Well done. Handle. So handle and blade, I like both, and those are really the main parts of the knife. Um, the flipping action is good too. So you'd be happy to know sometimes the cheaper flippers have to assist themselves to work like the cryo for example. However this one flips about as well as like the Spyderco Mantra does which was never an amazing flipping knife, never was, but it's um, definitely got sort of enough kick in it to make it a lot more fun to use than sort of your average kind of, you know, you get some flippers out of the box to go like this, there, there sort of thing. So definitely not that. Nice firm Firm flip, good detent, easy life, happy stuff. So the main elements of the knife I really, really like. Let's just get into the slight knocks that I have on the blade. Stuff like this does not impress me. Um, this is supposed to make the knife, so you open up the knife, and then you lock it open, and you click this across, and that stops the, it stops the knife from unlocking. But you can still move the bar a bit, it stops it from unlocking though. Um, why? I don't know. I, I really can't see a point where you'd be that worried about this lock disengaging using your thin tipped folding knife on. It just doesn't quite make sense to me. It's just a feature for the sake of adding a feature which just doesn't really impress me too much. I would rather just have left it. Uh, another thing is the lock up goes really really far across. Um, I was actually cutting some cheese and I managed to pop it and I had to get a butter knife and 
pry it back across, but it was really wrenching down, and it is a frame lock thing. When you really wrench down, and this, this part of the finger is pushing against the back of the lock, you can sometimes force it across, and that did happen to me, but no adverse effects after that. And that was really, um, I was really pressing into some like really hard, well not hard cheese, but really sort of doughy cheese, gummy cheese kind of thing. So, eh, it happens. But certainly not the end of the world, but definitely a slight knock on the knife. Uh, the pocket clip, whilst being good and whilst it's cool they've gone deep carry, um, it still leaves this much tang out. I don't, why do they do that? Why wouldn't they just either make the pocket clip go over the top or start back here? It just It's not a bad knife in pocket, but I just don't quite understand. It's a bit like the, um, the ZT did this as well. This is the ZT0909. Like, why, you know? Just put it up a bit higher. Come on, guys. Anyway, um, some other things, I would like a bit more grip on the handle for those occasional times you do more than a couple of cuts with your EDC knife, and I know they're occasional, so uh, that's really nothing too bad, but um, in general, it's a pretty well designed knife, and it's pretty, you know, it's it's almost getting past that really vanilla Chinese knife that you often get, sort of. It's hard to explain, and it would really help if they gave the knife a proper name even. I don't know, there's some, some of these knives, there's one called the Thor, there's one called the Sea Eagle, but the E7, I, I keep forgetting it, it's that forgettable, the E571. Like, come on guys, just call it something. All the Benchmades have, you know, this is the Benchmade 5561, but it's the Mini Grip, it's the new Mini Grip. You know, do it, it's um, the Benchmade 940, but it's the Osborne 940. It's, it's got a name, you know? The Rat 1. You know, it's it's from it's memorable at least, and I know it's got a number in it still, but I mean, come on, guys, um, the Boca Urban Trapper. That's a cool name, you know, very cool. Just yeah, a little bit more thought and a bit more care would really give the knife a bit more personality and make it just not one of the horde of fairly generic knives that are um, coming across the sea from China um, to America and to everywhere else. Which you know, I don't really have a, too much of a problem with, but uh, just yeah, go that little extra step is my advice. But overall, for $70, getting a steel, that was another good point, the steel, sorry, 14C28N is a really good steel. It's almost about as good as non-powder steels can get. You got this, you got VG10, you got 154CM, you got ATS34, those sorts of steels. The next level up are the powdered steels, so one of the better ones. It's definitely better than your average sort of 440C um, AUS8 that you're going to get on most knives of about this class. Lots better than the CR13 MOV type steels. Really, really good they've gone that extra step of sourcing themselves some Sandvik. Um, the flipping action, did I mention? Yeah, it's good. It's it's solid. No problems at all. So yeah, um, I know it's a little quick review, but it's really a it's a pretty simple knife and it's it's got a couple of cool things going for it. It's you know one of the better materials out there for a knife of this price range. Um, a bit like kind of those Kaisers that are in VG10 for like 70 bucks. This is good, it's about 70 bucks in Australia, it's about 50 in America with a 14C and stainless steel handle. It's going to give you an extra ounce of weight, so this is a 4 ounce knife when compared to, say this, which is a 3 ounce knife for, you know, 110 grams to, you know, 90 grams, whatever, but, geez, I'm sure right now you've got some coins in your pocket that don't, no, don't really need to be there that you're carrying around anyway, so if you're that much of a weight snob, then, I don't know, you're probably going to be very hard to please. <laughs> anyway, so there you go. Um, I guess the only other thing, and I know I'm a bit scattershot here, just as the thoughts as they fly, would have been nice if they'd have a, had an option for the pocket clip here. Um, it really is just a single position. So that's just something that's not, not, not ideal. But overall, you've got a steel that will hold a great edge. You've got a handle that feels good in hand. A little bit slick perhaps, but feels good in hand. Sturdy knife, original design, great blade shape, slices like a beast, a couple of pocket clip options. Um, it's a frame lock, which does well. It does have a bit of a pointless feature here. It is a little bit slippery in the hand, but it's a great price. So I think really the real steel E571 is a great choice for a knife in this price range. And really, it's probably all the knife you'd probably need for everyday carry. Great choice for someone who perhaps isn't into knives, who you want to get into knives, but you don't want to spend heaps of money on in case they never get into knives. A bit like how the Rat 1 is the, kind of the same. The knife to buy someone who's not really a knife guy. Good times, good knife. Thanks for watching, dudes. See you in the next one.